The room where I landed was the cellar of the main building. In the distance, I heard screams. I felt as though I were permanently intoxicated. Everything before me became sharp and clear. I was sleepwalking and wide awake at the same time. I could only think of one thing, cyanide. All right, here we are once again, Velvet Assassin, Bloody Meow, and as this green piercing light shows us the way, we have infiltrated the Gestapo prison, trying to look for Agent Radek, the third man. And he's probably being tortured right now, but he's not going to disclose any information because he's a good secret agent. But he might at some point, and he's probably wishing for death. And uh, Vi Violet is the death that he is wishing for. With the cyanide that the first agent was too cowardly to use, I have to deliver the cyanide pill to the last agent. And see, pushing that box to cover this light is required because otherwise this guy is staring you right down the, the uh, center. So, oh, I must took some damage last. Oh yeah, I did take a lot of damage last uh, mission. And something I didn't realize that your health does not regenerate. It actually regenerates by a little bit when you do a silent kill. So that's a kind of cool little incentive to heal. They actually give you generous amounts of times to heal. But, you know, nothing much else. And I just realized this guy wasn't going to turn around unless I actually went up towards him. Yeah, that's one of those scripted guys. He wasn't going to move until I actually tried to move him. I don't really like that type of things, but... Yeah, so this is just a basic, uh, you know, can't go this way just yet. Got to go this way for a detour. So, let's do it. And uh, once again, here a extremely long conversation which we have no choice to but listen to. We cannot cross because this little bit of light right here, we can't cross. They'll see us. So all what Violet really can do is uh, listen in. So I guess we'll do that. And you know, to be honest, it's actually pretty entertaining dialogue there. Like, how he imitated the viewer and everything to like, when he, when he said that sentence. I mean, a lot of that stuff is really well done. And I do like it, but... Uh, and that was very funny, I mean... There was, there was a punchline to that dialogue. If you actually read that dialogue, there was a punchline where it's like, Ask your trottle, or ask your girlfriend, at the very end there. It was pretty, pretty well done. I, I do enjoy it, but uh... In any case, yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have to worry about this anymore, because you have to hear that conversation every fucking time if you fail. That's, once again, there's those drawbacks that sometimes put, you know, make surface here, but that's okay. So, we um, need to take the power out. That's what our main mission is here right now, or our main current objective. And there's a switch to make the power go out, and there is a uh, guard kind of in our way. But we could... Um, go ahead and take on that guard, except we would be in bright light. So instead, we have to make a little detour. Once again, this level is all about detours. Actually, it really is. And um, 
take care of the patrolling guard down here, but we gotta do it right, so he's not in the light when we shoot him, I was, this guy is gonna see it. But yeah, this mission, and this actually, this is not my favorite mission, uh, the third man, I did lie. My favorite mission actually is the next, next one, so I do apologize for a lot of miss, <laughs> but I, I just like the ghetto and the prison due to the fact of, uh, you know, the environment we're in, but yeah. All right, did that well. Grab his key. Oh, we need the key to get into the door where that guy is. Never mind. We could go up the stairs, but it's but it's. I think it's actually impossible to go up there without him seeing us. I'm pretty sure it is. So, but uh, oh god, I am almost through the wall. That was fucking weird. <laughs> Jesus, that could have been bad. And another thing about these glass shards, they have pretty bad hit. Hit, um, collision. So if you go to the border of them, you don't make any sound on them. Kind of funny. <laughs> Good thing I got that morphine. Now we got two morphine again. Like I said, having two morphine is this is pretty much the only point where this is the only reason I decided to get two morphine. Like, there really is no um, reason other than this. <laughs> is this level, this level, and maybe the next one. So, and that's about it. So once I get a good position when this guy back, so turns his back again, I'll go ahead and grab him. But this mission, yeah, this mission is very complex, very intricate, a lot of different things. And if you want to get a lot of the collectibles, you got to do some really weird shit. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. I mean, it's crazy. But like I said, we want to get as much levels as we can so we can get our strength up to full. How I should be off now. A collectible there and a collectible down here that would be really stupid to try to get with that uh, person. Oh, morphine. Never mind. Well, hell, I might go back and grab that morphine if I remember. I thought there was a collectible down here. Oh, I guess not. All right. <laughs> Whatever. But yeah, um, the morphine I'm not too worried about, and you'll understand that eventually. But um, what I do, what I am concerned about is leveling up my strength because that's going to be the most important thing near the end of the game, unfortunately. And I can't um, stress unfortunately enough, but... Further in, we got to find this main torture chamber, maybe the death row or death tract of the cell block. And this music is kind of a um, more haunting version of the church, the Butcher of Paris, the church music. That's kind of what I find this one to be. It's a, it's similar with that like chorus sounding f effect. I think it's called like Death Chorus is the music track, but it's a little bit different, a little bit more eerie. And these guards have flashlights. One of the few in the game that have flashlights without being alerted. Luckily, with Stealth Plus Five, like I said, if you didn't have Stealth Plus Five, I don't know how the fuck you could do any of these missions silently. Because sometimes it's like near like a two second window to grab people. It's ridiculous. But as you can see in this large room, there is uh, a lot of illuminating going on. That guy with his chest flashlight, very dangerous. Got to be careful. And careful we will be. What I do like is that um, the closer you get, the subtitles fight away. So it's actually kind of like a little bit of like a visual effect. You can't hear the subtitles if you're too far away. I kind of like that. It's a little bit realistic. All right, let's get down the brass tacks here. This guy is coming our way. So just let's hear this music for a little bit. It's just it's it's calming in a very tense tense way, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so far so good. Wait, like even more of this music you hear is like this gas mask breathing. I mean it's ridiculous how uh, ambient this uh this level is. How how much this this game is the soundtrack in general. It's just really good. Really like it. Don't need to go in the bathroom. I almost got caught behind Oh, I'm caught behind the door. Okay, good. Because that can happen in this game. There is a lot of collision errors. <laughs> Luckily, we really haven't had too much issue with this stuff, so I guess I'm pretty fortunate. And also, luckily, this guy does not have a flashlight, which makes it pretty easy to sneak up onto. 
Turn around there, Butch. There you go. Yeah, using their grenades to trigger deaths is not really worth it unless you're looking for, like, I guess an achievement or something on one of the console versions. We're just saying, this Steam version does not have achievements. They could have easily put that in there. Not that it's a really big deal at all. It really isn't, but it's just something to think about. To consider, why not, right? But yeah, this is a very, um... Definitely a infiltration mission, you know. You are not a predator in this one. You are a, uh, lurking shadow. Not, hoping not to be exposed. And you are not, you're on a mission, for sure. <sighs> Last yawn you'll do! Said that before. <laughs> and, with that, we, uh, go to a absolutely... F just... Sh farked up... Um... Part. Got the key, an SS uniform, and yes... Once again, we are SS Violette. I just love it. She has a stern frown on her face. She has her hands behind her back, all formally, and she has a very rigid, like, demeanor. I love it. She's very good at acting, and her hair is a little bit different, too. Well, not really. I guess she just has a cap tied on. Tight on. But yeah, this SS uniform bullshit is the most broken gimmick I have seen. And you'll probably witness here because this is so wonky. But we also are going to do some crazy finesse. So get ready for this shit. There's a collectible in there. There's no way to get it without being detected. You can morphine in there, but you can't morphine out due to the proximity. So, um... What's the problem, you say? What's so hard about getting this? Well, first of all, this. One, two, three, four guards. And uh, let's just keep some silence while Blighty does his thing. All right, Violette, time for some hyper mode. You ready? And that is how we handle this room. <laughs> Not really a assassin, more so like a bloodthirsty um, combatant. It's pretty ridiculous, actually. Um, but like I said, if you do not, if you, um, you can easily go through here um, with the SS uniform and, and pass through the proximity and everything, no problem. But there's two guards that constantly sit by that gateway. You can't go in between them, it's too close, and you can not You can morphine past them, but then, immediately, as soon as you get out of morphine, they know who you are, and they turn around, and it's, you're pretty much screwed over anyway. You can't go through here as Sneaky Violet, because they will quickly, quickly um, ruin your day. So the only thing you really can do is kill them all, and I think a two silent pistol shot, headshots, and a... Um, Double morphine is the way to go. And what I've learned is that morphine has a cooldown of about five seconds, which lets you not, like, completely, you know, burst through the level, which I guess makes sense. All right, looks like we're in the cell block proper. We've got to be careful. This is a really, really uh, sensitive place. Dear Marilla, I am still alive, although I feel as though I were already dead. 
I do not know where I can find the strength to bear it all. They have taken David from me. We were locked in a large holding cell when the door opened and two men in SS uniforms entered. They eyed us all with disparaging looks. Then one of them pointed at David. Two soldiers seized him immediately and beat him terribly. I could not help him. I was so afraid. Then they dragged him out. I have not seen him since. God knows what they have done with him. They are not men. They are worse than beasts. They could come and take me away at any moment. I fear they will kill us all. I hope that death comes quickly. Forgive me. I love you. Yours, Agnitska. And you can be rest assured that that letter would have never been delivered to the receiver. These Nazis would probably just use it for toilet paper. But yeah, visions of a, of a uh, church window with uh, Christ on it, um, with uh, this being the trigger of it. Kind of symbolic right there, definitely. Um, but yeah, this is the cell block. You can actually hear... Um, helpless prisoners screaming in, in complete uh, despair. Look at this proximity. See how this proximity is going down? He's below me. He can't even see me. I'm in the shadows. But if for some reason, if I was below him right there, if I was below him, it would go red and he would be alerted. Does that make fucking any sense? <laughs> now I have to wait for this guy to turn around again. There we go. And the reason is because there is a hidden collectible in here and we do need that. 